When I started my business, I was doing all the work. Like most people, I found myself working in the business and having to work on the business, which was great for a while. There became a point where I needed to make a clear divide between the two if we were gonna continue to grow. This is the fifth part of our business growth series where I am taking my top growth advice from 14 years experience of running a successful marketing agency and working with hundreds of different businesses. And today we are talking about creating systems that are scalable without you. Let's jump in. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Liquid Digital Marketing Podcast. This is our fifth part in our business growth series and we are talking about creating systems that are scalable without you. So let's jump into this. Um, I'm going to start with a story, my story and how this affected me. So when we started the business, it was mostly web design is what we did. We did graphic design and, and some marketing, but mostly it was it was web design. Let's just say that was my primary function in the business. And um, I was the one that did all of the websites. I built them, I designed them, I did all of the work. And I also was in sales and the marketing side and the lead gen side of things. So as we started, I would work on getting leads in and marketing the company and, and the lead gen side of things and build up our pipeline, get customers in, and then I would transition into getting the work done. And then I had to really kind of just focus on that and the marketing and all of the other stuff kind of, you know, had to sit to the side while I worked. And then I got all the work done, everything's great. And then I had to now go back to the marketing because our pipeline was dry. We didn't have any new work coming in. I was constantly snip snapping back and forth between the two and it created this roller coaster for years. Then I realized this is because of the system. I'm going back and forth between the two things and I'm working in the business and working on the business. When I'm working on the business, it's growing. When I'm working in the business, it's, you know, it's the essential operational part, but it's not growing. So I had to create the systems. I had to create the way that I could start handing off the things that I am doing. So I'm not working in the business. I'm working on the business. And when I say working on the business, I'm talking about creating systems inside the business, working on bringing new work in, doing the things that are going to grow your business. When I talk about working in the business, I'm talking about doing the client work. You know, if you're a plumber, that means going out and doing all the plumbing. If you're a painter, that means going out and painting, right? So if you're painting a house, it's really hard to go out and market yourself and get new houses to paint if you're busy painting them, right? Like, that's just the way it is. So it's creating that divide. And in order to create that divide, in order to stop working in the business, you have to create systems where other people can come in and do the job that needs to be done. And if that person then leaves, someone else can come in and you have this system that works without you and that is scalable. So what we're gonna do in this episode is we are going to break down creating systems, then we're gonna talk about creating systems that are scalable, and then we're gonna talk about creating systems that are scalable without you. So let's just talk about creating systems. Like what are systems? Systems are a lot of things, but basically it's how things get done. It's what we call the standard operating procedure. It's the SOP is what they call it. So systems can be, um, you know, like if you're, like for us, if we're building a website, you know, part of our system is going live. Like what are the points that we need to do to go live? How do we go live? You know, how, when we have a new customer, how do we onboard that customer? What is the system? What what tools are we using? What tasks need done? Who does what? 
How does the system function? It could be down to your social media calendar, right? So how do the ideas get generated? How do things get filmed? How do things get edited? How do things get published? What's Who is doing it? And what tools are being used? Where is it being saved? How is it being named? That's the systems, right? So, and there's a lot more of systems, but those are like the general systems, the things that need to be done. So what types of things should you systemize? Well, that is honest, honestly, that is a huge answer because it, it's really everything and anything you can systemize. The more, the more you systemize, the better. Think about all of the things that you do and all of the things that you shouldn't be doing, right? Like if you could put down like all of the things you do in like a week, and put on one side all of the things that you should do that you want to do and then on the other side put down all of the things that you shouldn't be doing and that you don't want to be doing and you want to create systems immediately for the things you shouldn't be doing so if you're the ceo of the company you shouldn't be necessarily probably editing your videos or you know coming up you know posting on social or um making edits to your website you know you shouldn't be probably out there in the field doing the actual work unless you need to be so it's things like that it's the systems that's you should systemize everything that you might want or need to have someone come in and do so that's what the system is going to create this repeatable procedure that way you have an expectation and a consistent result so think of mcdonald's or any fast food chain when you go to it like they're systemized like you you know exactly when you go to do this job okay i'm in charge of the fries so here's how it works like it goes in it comes out i don't know the what the process is i have never worked in fast food but i find it super intriguing like when i drive through in and out i would actually love to work at in and out for like a week and just see how it gets systemized and how it actually runs i think that would be like super cool um I just as a business owner and, and working in systems I just think it's fascinating you know how everybody has a role and there's like these things in place and you know what to do and it's it gets done every time and then when something doesn't get done right it messes everything else up right so the systems work off of each other so that's what the systems are and why you should create them but what about making them scalable Scalable means like making them to where it's it can grow and it can expand. So a system that can handle more clients, a system that can when it when you grow as more things come on, as more people come in, that these systems can like expand and handle and there's people in charge of the right things. It's basically if you can just take something you're doing consistently, record it and create a repeatable process and then find someone to do it, right? So this is how you're gonna start scaling your business. Okay, so how do you make these scalable without you? So first off is, is why? So really think of your business as a franchise. If you are, you know, let's say for us, like if, as a marketing agency, if I am trying to franchise my business, but my my business solely relies on me doing these marketing tasks or me building the websites, if I can't remove myself from that, then it's not scalable. It's not franchisable. And not that you necessarily are trying to make a franchise, but if you can build your business as if it was going to be franchised, now you're go- it's going to force you to create systems that are going to work without you. It's going to take you out of the equation, and then you're not going to be the bottleneck, right? Right now, if you are in your business, if you can't step away from your business, then it's not scalable. It's not franchisable. You are the bottleneck of your company. So it's really creating systems that and creating these processes that can work without you having to work them. Okay, 
All right, I think we've nailed that one down. So let's talk about the next piece. Some, some ways in which this happens. So we kind of alluded to this earlier, the SOPs, the Standard Operating Procedure. This is kind of like the Bible of your business. It's, it's how things are supposed to get done. And they're in greater detail of what and hows and whys. And there are more documents. So when someone else comes in, they could actually pick up this, what we call SOP, the standard operating procedure, and see, oh, okay, I see this is how it works. Okay, so that is the SOP. Then there's this the piece that lies kind of on top of it, which is the checklist. So I don't have it in front of me, but the uh, good book to read is The Checklist Manifesto. Um, it is all about creating checklists. So if you are um, an airline pilot, you work off of checklists, right? There is a, a set of things that you're supposed to do when a certain situation arises. This is the checklist and it's quick, it's high level, it's short. It's like, okay, this is the situation. I'm gonna do A, B, C, and D. This is the checklist. Okay. And then there's the standard operating procedure that's behind the checklist. So let's say a pilot were to run into the situation where there's somewhat of an emergency and timely issue, they're not going to open up the SOP and start reading through paragraphs of text. They need to see quick and fast, like, okay, X, Y, and Z, what do I need to do? This is it. This is the checklist, right? So you need to, this SOP is going to be the bigger piece the checklist is going to be the the quick like daily like this is what i'm going to need to do the sop is like this is how this is the bigger thing like you're going to need to understand the sop for you to understand the checklist okay so how do you create these sops and these checklists well there's some tools so one tool and it kind of depends on your business but one tool if you're like a digital business or like most businesses, I guess, is a tool called Loom. So this is going to allow you to record and easily share yourself or your screen. And so if you have some digital, you know, more of a digital business, um, then you can create, you know, these recordings and save them off. And then people can come in and get a visual and see and it's super easy. It saves all of the videos in Loom. You can just share them with a link and categorize them, folder them, all of this cool stuff. So you can even put call to actions in them and leave notes and comments. It's really a cool tool. Um, the next one is Tango, which is a Chrome extension. So basically what this is going to do is in a sense like Loom, it's going to record your screen, but kind of differently. So it's going to basically, you're going to go to um, Chrome and you're going to, let's say, walk through a process. And again, this is probably more for a digital business, but you're going to walk through a process and it's going to record everything you do. And at the end of it, it's going to actually spit out or save off uh, an SOP. And so it's a super handy tool. Um, but again, probably more for um, a business that is more digital based, right? So, okay. Um, the other tools that I, one tool we use is Asana. So this is great for more of the, the checklist. So we actually have templates. So let's say a, a new project, a web design project comes in. Well, we have a web design um, template that we created and we just open, we just create that with the new job and it has all of the task. It has everything that we're going to do in order so we don't miss anything and we know who's going to do what in the time frames. And it's a project management app. Um, another one is ClickUp, which um, I personally have not used, but I've heard really good things. It's very customizable and maybe um, a little bit more work to get kind of rolling, but I am just speaking off of what I think I know, right? So I haven't actually used it. Um, super easy, super great tool. Uh, both of them are great tools. Anyway, another one is Notion. So very much like Asana and ClickUp, it's going to be an online tool that is um, really, it's, it's this note-taking app on steroids, right? So it's this, there's really you can do anything you can you can do so much with it i can't even like really begin to explain 
but it's like a note-taking app for the most part and it stores all this information easy to share um, so that's another one to check out as tools go um, if you are really serious about doing this I highly recommend picking up this book it's a uh, clockwork by Michael McCallowitz, if I'm saying that right. Um, it's a great book and it's all about designing your business to run itself, right? So that that is a great one. Another one which I don't have in hand is The E-Myth Revisited. This these two books actually kind of changed my my life when it came to running a business. Um, I read The E-Myth Revisited first fantastic book and it's really talks a little bit more about like the franchising your business and and really really hits home if you're a business owner you're gonna love it it's 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 gonna be a good book i highly recommend the e-myth revisited um and then clockwork is um you know another one that is so good to you know get your business to a place where it's scalable without you and ultimately that's that's what you want um all right so this wraps up our episode today in creating those systems that are scalable without you if you found this valuable please share it with someone who might want to hear this and we'll see you in the next episode